Hello everyone, it's Kathy Koliakova with Time on Task Virtual Assistant Services and today we're going to do a few productivity tips on using Basecamp for virtual assistants and clients. So we're going to start today and we are using what they refer to now as the new version of Basecamp. So when you log into Basecamp you'll be given an invitation, you'll have to create a username and a password and then what you can actually do is you can see I've saved in my bookmarks my Basecamp projects so it's something you'll be able to do by just clicking your star or your favorite button if you use Chrome in a browser and bookmark the page so you can always save it. The other thing that's great about it is there is an, an app for iPhone and Android to use Basecamp so you can also use that as well. So when you're starting um, using Basecamp for the first time, when you do sign in, there is a video that they have about how projects work so you may want to try that and look at that video. Um, then basically what we work with are things called discussions, or conversations, files, text documents, and events. You can also create to-do lists, so these would be templates of things that you have to do over and over again, so you can start a message, enter the to-do list, and then you do that particular to-do list for that particular task or person, and then you move on. It's not something we really do with our clients one-on-one, -on -one, but we do with our team on the other side of it. So we're going to go through a couple of the basics here. So discussions. So when you want to start a discussion, you hit, um, you start the test um, and you put in a title. And this is what's going to show up as the title in the email message when it comes in. Then you basically type in your message here. If you want to add a file, you can add a file here. You can also connect your Google Docs account so that um, when you hit this button to connect a Google Doc, it actually sends a link to the doc. Um, here you can see that it's automatically going to post it to all four people on the project. I tend to like to click let me choose who should get an email and I've got a couple of the girls on the team here that I'm just doing here sort of testing so I could take a, a message to Patty and she's actually going to get a copy of that message by an email. Um, and then you can just hit post the message. If I didn't want to email anybody mess this message and that there's a discussion here, I would just click the button here. If you're always going to send it to all the people on the project, you can also tick this as well. And you just hit post the message. One of the things that happens a lot of times is people end up removing people from a thread or adding them in. So it's something you want to watch on how you do it because if you do change, so I can again, I can add some files, link a Google Doc. The comment's only going to go to Patty because she was the only one that I had ticked to get that message in the first place, but maybe I want to bring in Grace now. So I would tick and add her name to it and just put add the comment. And so now both of those people have gotten a confirmation email notification on the second message, but Patty's the only one that got this first message. I can edit the message, I can change it around if I want to. One of the things that a lot of people have to watch out for is uh, don't remove people if you don't want them to see it. So what happens I find is you're having a conversation with a few people in Basecamp and then you say, oh well, Patty doesn't need to know this information so I'm going to change it. I'm going to take her off this message thread. That's all great, but now if she wants back in and she needs to be part of the conversation a little later on, what happens is if you just hit um, submit here or add the comment, Patty gets no notification. So that's really important that you understand that if you take somebody off, they now don't get any notification. So that's how all of those go and what happens on the other side of how the notifications work, um, just so that you can see how how this goes. You're going to get the notification. This is what we like about Basecamp. You'll get the email, but if you don't save the email, and I like to get rid of them because, well, I put them in a to-do folder. Once I've finished working with them, then I get rid of them. I delete them out of my email. The reason that I don't um, keep them in there is because you always keep a copy of this entire message thread. So now when I look at the project, I can see there's one discussion and I can see the updates that have happened in here. So that's something that happens with all of those, with the information going through. You get the whole 
conversation thread gets saved, which is how it works so easy for us to keep track of who's doing what. And it helps you know that somebody sent this information, yes, you got it back. If you deleted the email or somebody forgot to copy you on it, you can always come back, go back to the discussion, and see the information that's happening in the entire message thread. You can reply by email, but when you do, you don't always necessarily see these notifications if they haven't come in your inbox at that point. So when I get the notification in my um, email, I tend to click on the link to open the message, come into here, and then I answer my message by putting the comments in here. And I'll come back in a minute to this when the notifications have come to my email and I'll show you how to do that. The next thing we use a lot are text documents. So these are basically um, documents that we keep, keep and we save information that we want as a reference point. So one thing that we put in here are logins for clients. We keep all the logins here. Um, we don't tick people to get a notification when we change them. That saves them from sending a username and password by email. So that's one thing that's really great about these. I would hit save this document and so now when I go back to the project you can see there's now a text document and I can actually see what it is. When we want to go and add more um, user information, logins, passwords into here, we just go in and edit the document, add the new ones, and then save it again. And so it's just a way to keep it all in there. Yes, I could go down in and I could tick people to get a notification, but if I do that, it's going to send the notification by email. So we tend not to do that for text documents that are holding logins. You can also keep lots of different things here. We save our projects. Um, in our projects for our team, we save processes. So, you know, step one to step ten of processing a newsletter for a client, we save those in text docs. So different things that are really requiring um, more reference points for you all the time. Documents and information that you might need to refer to. That's what we tend to keep in a text document. Files. You can attach a file and just upload a file if you want to. So you can just go in and you hit um, add a file. Select the file from your computer. Um, we'll go in here and I'll just uh, put in a little note here. Let's see. I'll just add a picture of my new puppy coming. So I can put the information in there. The other thing that you really should be doing is uh, labeling things in Basecamp when you upload a file. So I usually put the year and then I usually put the department so to be client X. And then if it has something to do with maybe procedures, I might label it with that as well. And you do that because you're able to look for files afterwards by labels. So that's one way of doing this. So now that I want to add it in, great. If I want to let somebody know that I've added this in, I'll tick their name and hit add the file. But you don't have to do that. If I tick it, Patty would get a notification. If I don't, she's not going to get a notification at all. So now that's put it in there and now I have a file. When you're in a discussion, so let's go back here, you can also add a file right in here. You select it from your computer. We'll put in a map of the university my son's heading off to. Put that in there. You would go in and you would label it as well. Whoops. You always have to hit label, add label. I forget that sometimes. And then you're done. And now I'm going to add the comment. So that's added the file in there as well. When I go back to the project, I can see now there's two files and it shows me what they are in here. And I can add a file directly from here if I want to. And you can also sort them in different ways and see when they were added up in the dates and download them if you want to. And at this point, you can also go in. Um, this may be something I can only do as an administrator, but I can also delete the file as well. Bring it back if I didn't mean to do that. So that's number three thing that we tend to do with this with Basecamp with our clients. The next one is the projects. We use this, um, the project calendar. We use this a lot because we want to get the information. Um, we want to have reminders in here. We'll tell clients when we're not in the office, different things like that. One of the things that we tend to go in and take a look is we change who has access to the project page. So I can go in and make sure that everybody has the information that's got to be connected to it. 
Um, I also go in there and I can say, you know, pick a color if we want to use a special color for anything on this calendar and hit Save Changes. So now when we go in, let's say we're always going to have to send a reminder for a newsletter to a client on a specific day. If I want a time, I can put 9 a.m. I can add Send Reminder is going to be the note that we're going to do. I probably wouldn't do that at that point. Who's going to get the notification for it? Um, in this case I'm going to say that Patty needs to get the notifications and how often? I want her to get it two days before at 7 a.m. So this is going to send her an email two days before the 15th saying Patty um, send reminder to Kathy or send newsletter content is what we would put to her. So you set this up and you hit add the event. So now you can see on the calendar we've got it there. We probably would remind them about the newsletter there because we're going to schedule the newsletter for this day at this point. You can again put in a time or not, doesn't really matter. What's going to be the reminder? I want to do it a day before and I'm going to get the reminder here. If Patty should get it as well, I would add her name in here and then hit save. Okay, so that's putting them in here. It's sending her a reminder then, but then it's also going to send her one two days before as well. So this is just a way you can keep information in here. Maybe I'm going to be out of the office um, on, you know, for a few days. So I'm going to be out of the office, I'm going to put a note there, and it's actually going to last for a few days because I'm not going to be back till the 30th. And I want Patty to be able to know about it, and I'm going to send her a reminder two days before to let her know. So this puts it right in here and it shows you that I'm going to be out for those dates and that part. So that's how you've got the different part of the calendar. So once they're in there, you've got it in there as well. This is really how we make this all work and how this all sets up and the information goes in there. Um, I just realized why I'm not getting this test because I don't get my own notification. So uh, what I'm going to do here is tick a little note because I made me as a secondary person in here. Um, so now you've got all this information so really one of the things I would remind you if you're using uh, Basecamp with a virtual assistant is they tend to be using them for a reason. And what you want to do with that is make sure that you're using it by going in again. If you reply by email, you won't necessarily see some of the information that was posted more currently. The other thing that you can take a look at as well, and mine's going to look a little different here. I'm going to have some information um, for other projects if I look down. But you'll see there's progress. So that's where I tend to keep my base camp. I leave the window open and I watch the progress. So if there's something new that comes in, I would also see the notification notification right in here and if I need to know what it is I can click on it as a link and it will show me what's going on with that information in the progress. So this is a really great way that you can um, and it shows you everything that I've done here and what's been going on so it's just a really great tool for you to keep up to date on that part of it. Now I'm going to show you over here the notification email I've got. So you can see that I got the notification. It says test project. So it's telling me that's the title of the project. And then the title of the message that I created, the discussion. And I just wrote testing. So you can click view on Basecamp here. You can click view on Basecamp here. You can also reply back to it at this point. So I'm just going to go um, stop emailing me and send this back. You can see where it's sending us to a very specific email address here. So it is something you can do and reply back that way. The thing that you have to remember is you can't send any attachments or upload anything or try to put notes in there and say see my notes below. When we do that a lot in emails, that's not something you can do there. That's why I always like to click the message to see it on Basecamp. It gets me into the project where we are and it takes me directly to that message. And you can see what's going on right in here. So it lets you know everything that's happening here. Um, then you would go back in, send your message back, add a file if you wanted to, and then hit add the comment.
and so that sends it all out there and all the other people whenever I send a note the other people get a notification when they send a note myself and anyone else on the message gets those notifications as well so that's how we really go through um, for our clients and use Basecamp with them you can see there's some upcoming events now that we've got some calendar stuff if you wanted to see all the updates you can you see sort of a glance every time you're in here a, you know a one page sort of uh, project manager of what's going on and you can always look at the catch up and see recent changes that have happened and gone on in the project. So that is how we use Basecamp with our clients and um, whether you're a client or a virtual assistant you know using the system for the first time or not they have some really great help features in there um, the video at the beginning that I was explaining would be helpful as well. Uh, I do feel that saving your project as a, as a bookmark is a really great way and not logging out. If you don't log out then you're always in it and you can always see the up-to-date information. Now if you're one of our clients and we're giving you this uh, video to take a look at, I do highly recommend you use this and one of the reasons that I do because I know sometimes we get a little pushback from clients that it's easier to send an email but the reality is for me to take the email that you might send me and deliver the work out to the team it actually takes more time so it's more billable time for you. So in the long run we're more productive if every time you need, you know, you want to have a new um, task done, you hit go into discussions, post a message, put up your new task, um, enter the info here, and then tick to send to all the people on the project or whoever should get it, and send it to those people. And that way we all get the information and we're all involved in what's going on and we can see the entire conversation revolving around that task. So if you are one of our Time on Task VA clients, I would ask for your patience in learning this. Um, definitely reach out to us if you need a little extra help to make it work for you. But you will find in the long run, uh, by using Basecamp, it actually saves you time and keeps everybody that's working on your project with our team working a lot more efficiently for you and not wasting as much time getting the message out to everybody else. So that is our little tour on how to use Basecamp. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do have any other questions, feel free to check on my timeontaskva.com slash blog and I've always got updated uh, tips and information for you there. Have a great day everybody.